The theme of Hand Tool School Semester 1 is Fundamentals and Joinery. It assumes very little and it's the perfect starting point for the beginning woodworker or a great place for the woodworker with a power tool background who wants to expand into the dark arts of hand tools. It's really my flagship product that focuses on the three fundamental skills of woodworking, plain craft, sawing, and chisel work. And I accomplished this with a mixture of lessons, applied projects, and a final project. Now, all of these videos can be watched as many times as you like on any computer or device. They can even be downloaded and watched offline if you purchase the download option. And most importantly, when you purchase this semester, your access never expires, so you can truly work at your own pace. There are 16 different technique lessons in semester one each one running from between 30 minutes to an hour in length. They cover everything from planing a rough saw board to sawing it to exact dimension to just about any joint you would encounter in typical furniture making. Now you can tackle these lessons in whatever order you want, but there is some method to my madness in how they're ordered. You see, each lesson will present a specific skill. In every subsequent lesson, you'll use that same skill, but you'll add one more to the mix. So with every lesson you complete, not only do you learn one new thing, but you continue to build upon everything you've already learned. So for example, in lesson one, we cover the basics of planing and chisel work, as well as some other getting started basics. Lesson two is going to introduce sawing and the three types of saw cuts, as well as it walks you through body mechanics and how to hold the saw and position your body for the best cut in each situation. In lesson three, we go back to planing, but this time in much deeper detail. I rely upon what was covered in lesson one and two, just so that you can prepare the stock for the exercises covered in lesson three. Further down the road, we cover half laps in lesson five, specifically before I recover tenons in the next lesson, because a half lap is nothing more than half a tenon. So tenons appear much easier once we've covered the half laps. And it continues, lesson after lesson, building skill on top of skill. Follow in order, you'll find that any struggles you've had with hand planning will melt away after preparing stock for each subsequent lesson. Likewise, your sawing skills will blossom for the same reason. Soon you'll discover that the fastest way to flatten a board is by sawing it close to the size before the plane ever hits it. The key is applying each of these skills in the context of the next lesson that truly cements the knowledge and builds the muscle memory. But new skills aren't truly formed until you've used them in the context of a project. And that's where our applied projects truly hit it out of the park. There are 13 applied projects in semester one. And each of these projects is specifically designed to highlight whatever skill is being taught in its respective lesson. Moreover, these are things that you would want to build anyway for your hand tool shop. So it's a double reward. Not only do you end up with something very functional for your wood shop, but you're building skill while building the project. For instance, lesson two's applied project is a saw bench. Now there are many ways to build a saw bench, but fresh from discussing the three types of saw cuts and how to execute them, we built this bench that only requires you to make those three types of cuts. I built this using home center lumber, so there's no additional planing or joinery to get in the way and confuse the issue. Just sawing straight and square. Now the really cool part is that the saw bench, once completed, will actually help you to improve your sawing by positioning your body properly for the best mechanics. Like I said, these applied projects are things you'd want to build anyway. It continues on and on through the rest of the semester projects. A square using only half laps. A saw horse using three kinds of mortise and tenons. A saw tail full of dovetails. And on and on and on. Now as you make these projects, building all your skills along the way, suddenly you'll discover that you've built yourself a functioning hand tool shop, complete with all the tools and bench appliances you need to build that next big project on your bucket list. Something like, say, maybe a tool cabinet? So won't it be so cool 
when after you've learned about all the fundamentals of plane craft and sawing and chisel work and applied it on a variety of bench appliances and shop aids, that you take all of those shop aids, all of those tools, and all of those experiences and sink them into building this tool cabinet. You'll break down rough stock with your saws and saw bench, then mill up and glue together case panels and dovetail them together. You use sliding dovetails for the drawer blades and dados for the runners and internal dividers. You'll leverage your experience with miters, grooves, half laps, and dovetails to make clamshell doors that look great but also keep your most used tools right where you need them the most. You'll make dovetail drawers with veneered fronts and use mortise and tenon to craft a bomb-proofed French cleat to hang the whole cabinet. Literally. Every technique and tool that we build and discuss in this semester gets used to build this tool cabinet. It's truly a final project, the culmination of everything we've talked about. New woodworkers get overwhelmed by tools. I mean, just look at this tool cabinet. Don't think you even need a quarter of the tools you see here. If you look at the semester one tool list, you'll see a compact yet comprehensive list of tools that will allow you to build so much stuff. And these are the tools that I stick with when I build all the projects in semester one. But here's the thing, you don't even need all the semester one tools to get started. In fact, I actually advise against that. Acquiring tools as you build skill is the most effective way because you learn what's needed and what just kind of gets in the way. Plus, when you join the hand tool school, you're gonna pick up a lot of advice on which brands to buy and how to restore old tools, what's really important now and what you can save until later, both by taking the lessons, but also talking with other members in the community and asking me questions. Now imagine, once you've been through all the lessons and built all of these projects and done it all the hard way using hand tools, Think then just how strong your woodworking kung fu will be.